Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, Lord, bind us together in love. Good morning and welcome to Bind Us Together. I'm Pastor Peg Harvey Morose the pastor of Grace Evangelical Lutheran Church in Lewiston, Idaho, and the pastor of Genesee Lutheran Parish in Genesee, Idaho. We began Bind Us Together back in March of 2020 as a way to remind us that though we were socially distanced, we were not alone. God is always with us. God is always loving us. God will never abandon us. We are the body of Christ. We are connected through the communion of saints. We are not alone. All right. Well, we are continuing our journey through Acts chapter 1. Uh, we will be in Acts chapter 1 for... Oh, maybe not. This is the... <laughs> for uh, Ascension. We're going to be uh, looking at, um, uh, well, Thursday is the, the Festival of the Ascension. And we usually just kind of whoo -hoo, um, speed by uh, the Festival of Ascension. But as I was talking about yesterday, uh, you can't have Pentecost without Ascension. Jesus needs to go away to make space for the Holy Spirit to come. And um, so anyway, we so we are continuing on. And today we are actually going to look at the Acts version of the Ascension. And there is also an Ascension that uh, text that we will read on Sunday as we begin our worship. Uh, from the Gospel of Luke, um, which, of course, as we talked about yesterday, um, Luke and Acts are the same story. We are now in part two of the Gospel of Luke and uh, talking about the continuation of the story um, that the church, that's us, folks, um, the church is now the continuation of the story. So Jesus, um, Jesus has to leave for then the church to begin to do its work. So here we are. This is the ascension of Jesus, according to my um, my. Oh, good morning, Ellen. Good to see you there. Um, according to my Lutheran study Bible. And excuse me, I've got a runny nose. It's allergy time. I'm all over the place. So if I'm sniffing, I apologize. <laughs> so here we go. Starting in uh, Acts chapter 1, verse 6. 6. So when they had come together, the disciples, they ask him, Jesus, Lord, is it the time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? He replied, it is not for you to know the times or periods that the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. When he had said this, as they were watching, he was lifted up, and a cloud took him out of their sight. While he was going, and they were gazing up toward heaven, suddenly two men in white robes stood by them. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand looking up toward heaven? This Jesus, who has been taken up from you into heaven, will come in the same way as you saw him go into heaven. All right, so there's several things going on here that, that we can uh, look at. 
So this is after 40 days of Jesus being with the disciples and instructing them. And um, I talked yesterday about the 40 days, the significance of the 40 days. Um, and it's not just that it's an important number, uh, 40 years for the Israelites in the desert, uh, 40 days in the wilderness for Jesus before his ministry began, 40 days from the resurrection uh, to the ascension. But uh, those 40 days uh, or 40 years um, is a period of preparation. So whether it was the Israelites or whether it was Jesus or whether it was the, the disciples, there was preparation going on for what was to come next. So this is um, not uh, an end of anything, but a preparation for um, the beginning. And I think that uh, it should remind us that as we go about uh, the ministry of God's kingdom in the world. And again, I apologize for the sniffing. Um, that we need to be prepared. And it, it doesn't mean that we put off doing anything forever because we are uh, still needing to be prepared because certainly the Israelites were not completely prepared to enter the promised land. Well, Jesus was completely prepared, but the disciples were not completely prepared uh, to begin the work of the, the church after those 40 days of instruction. And so we are not going to be fully prepared, but we should be uh, continually preparing uh, ourselves for what is to come. So, you know, what are the things that we need to be preparing for now, as we are um, emerging, beginning to emerge back into the life of the world uh, at, with the pandemic. And how is that changing who we are as the church, as Christ followers? And um, how has what has happened uh, to us in this uh, pandemic period uh, changed what we need to be doing in the world. Um, what have we learned? And what do we still need to learn? So the, the importance of that preparation time. So as Jesus is preparing to ascend then, to leave them behind, he is telling them that he's telling them what he has been preparing them for, and it is to be witnesses um, in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. So this was never just about Israel. It was about all of creation. And so their question that came before, Lord, is this the time when you will restore the kingdom of Israel? Israel's not the point, and it's not just one group of people, but it is the whole world, the ends to the ends of the earth that need to hear about God's love through Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and of course, what we have tended to do as we have witnessed to the world is told the world, you need to become like us, which is not what the book of Acts tells us at all. But historically, that's what the church has done. You must become like us in order for God to love you. And forgetting the point that God loved the entire world, every single person, uh, long before any ideas that we had of what would make someone lovable or more lovable. So to be witnesses um, is not to be witnesses to dogma, but to be witnesses to love. And, you know, go back to the gospel readings over the last couple of weeks. Go back to 1 John 
and what has uh, have those two books been telling us that it's all about God's love and then our taking God's love and sharing it with the world, sharing it with our our siblings in Christ, our siblings in the world, because we are all we are all siblings. Um, we want to divide people up because it's easier for us to to deal with folks if we already have a stereotype set up, and so I don't need to talk about you, uh, whether it's race or it's ageism or it's men or versus women or uh, cultures or countries or whatever it is, we love to divide, divide and conquer. Um, but that's not what the, the mission of Christ is all about. So that, that question, the, the, the disciples, they just couldn't let go of that. You know, when is, when are you going to redeem Israel? When are you going to, um, restore the kingdom of Israel? Well, it's not, it's not about Israel. It's about the whole world. All right, moving on. Um, so then he begins to ascend, and everybody's like, oh, look at that, look at that. And this is the part of the story that I love the most. So um, two men in white robes, undoubtedly angels, Say, why are you standing here looking up? Because um, they're, you know, continuing to oh, look up at Jesus. Try to find him up there. Uh, and and I have this vision of like stupefied faces, oh, looking up. And uh, and what I hear in what these. Um, two men in white angels say to uh, to the disciples is, you know, why are you looking up? You need to be looking down around because Jesus is physically gone and it's now your work to be done. So I, I love that part of the story. And I'm afraid that the church frequently um, has stood around looking up and um, and in in doing so not that there's anything wrong with looking up but if we if that's all that we do then um, it's it's all about getting to heaven this is a personal pet peeve of mine that being saved or being baptized or being a Christian is all about getting to heaven. And it's like, if that's what you think Christianity is about, somehow you have missed the conversation because eternity, heaven, begins right here. It is the kingdom of God in our present lives, in the work that we do as the church, uh, our life of being Jesus followers is not about anticipating our, our, um, our heading off to heaven, but it is in creating heaven on earth, the kingdom of God on earth. It is serving the neighbor, loving the neighbor, witnessing to the neighbor about the love of God. So um, I, I, I talk about that, that um, uh, overemphasis of heaven uh, or getting to heaven as fire insurance, that that's what baptism becomes for, for people. Well, I'm baptized, Phew, I don't need to think about it anymore. Uh, no, baptism is the beginning of Heaven, uh, the quote from Catherine, uh, St. Catherine of Siena is all the way to heaven, is heaven. And um, 
uh, or t and then what what I say is that eternity, uh, eternal life is not something that be that begins when we die, but it um, begins in baptism. So um, that that will come. That's a promise. We don't need to be, you know, staring up at heaven, waiting for that to happen, because we know that it will. But we have work to do right now in this place. And there are lots of people in need, lots of hurting people, lots of lonely people, just lots of people. Uh, including us, quite honestly, who need to be reminded of God's love on a daily basis. So um, heaven is where we're going to get there. That's not something to worry about. That's the promise. Uh, but bringing God's love right here, right now to the people. That's our job. So... <laughs> Don't stand there looking up. Get to work. All right. <laughs> okay, so this morning, uh, and we will be singing this on Sunday as our ascension uh, gathering hymn. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to shine away from the earth to the cross. My debt to pay. From the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky, Lord, I lift your name on high. All right, that's a good one. So, what are our prayer concerns today? So, my lovely daughter, Juniper, no, my lovely daughter, Hope, I have two lovely daughters, but, um, uh, hoped. so Hope called last night. She's in Lancaster. Uh, it's not what she expected. And <laughs> her dad and I were like, what did you expect? Because we knew exactly what you were going to and the number of people and the, the, um, extravagantly rich and the incredibly poor uh, practically living side by side she was aghast um, the funniest comment <laughs> the funniest thing that just drove her up the wall was there was this big hacienda kind of house big sprawling house and they had a helicopter in their front yard and she's like helicopter why, why does anyone need a helicopter in their yard it's like you are in a different world honey so, uh, I'm not even sure what, what it is that she needs. Um, uh, patience to, to learn uh, about her, um, her job and um, the, the community and um, uh, what a different part of the world. This child has been to Africa. She has been to Europe. She has been to um, Central America twice uh, and stayed in these places for extended periods of time. And she's finding California shocking. <laughs> I find that humorous. Uh, but anyway, she will, she will learn uh, a new culture, uh, new people. But anyway, I thought it was just uh, funny. Uh, what other uh, prayer concerns do we have this morning? Uh, we pray uh, that God helps us to um, not just stand looking up, but uh, 
to, to look around at uh, the mission that we share. Just be witnesses. All right, Ellen says that our daughter Jennifer will have successful ankle surgery on Thursday. All right, so Jennifer. Oh, ankle surgery. All right, anything else? Well, um, I'm going to go ahead and get started with our prayers. Uh, if you have anything else, go ahead and type it into the comments, um, and I will bring them in at the end. So, the Lord be with you. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks uh, for the wisdom of Jesus ascending to make space for us to be your hands and feet in the world. Help us to not stand around looking up, but to look around us and to see where your love needs to be witnessed to, which is actually everywhere, in every place and every time. Help us to be your hands and feet, to be your love in the world. We lift up Hope as she is adjusting to life in California, living in the bunk, uh, bunkhouse, uh, and uh, learning to about an, a new state, a new culture, uh, a new place, the uh, different realities of, uh, of living there. Give her patience, give her strength, <laughs> and and let her just give it time. Lord, we lift up Ellen's daughter, Jennifer, and we uh, pray that on Thursday, she will have successful ankle surgery, guide the hands of her surgeon, uh, be with all of the doctors and nurses and technicians and everyone who will be caring for her so that she can be literally back on her feet as soon as possible. Lord, all of these things we lift up to you, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Well, my dear friends, thank you for being here. And remember, be kind. Wash your hands. Stay at home if you don't need to go out. Wear a mask if you do. Get vaccinated. Remember your neighbors. Share the good news. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.